This message is a recording from Kaleo Phoenix, a church plant in downtown Phoenix that creates space to practice the ways of Jesus together as the multi-ethnic family of God. Good evening. Welcome to Kaleo, a place where we create. I'm so happy that you decided to join us tonight. Today is unique and interesting. We're doing something a little different. Uh, Many of you know we are doing Kaleo Stories Part 6. Can you believe we have six parts already to this? So this is um, a, a fun time where we hear stories from the community because we believe in um, acknowledging and centering the stories of people that are sitting right next to us and centering the lived experiences, especially of people of color. But we're going to do something a little different tonight um, with that. But before we begin, I've prepared a little something in light of if you, I don't know, use the internet at all, you probably have heard of the tragic death of um, Tyree Nichols, who tragically passed away by four black cops that beatily, brutally beat him to death, which is a very hard thing to even say out loud. My heart, heart has been quite heavy um, even thinking about, how, how do we even talk about something like this? Um, but let me, let me just read what I wrote, because I think that'll be easier. But before I even do that, um, as always, I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement to honor the Native people that existed here before us. I honor the first peoples of current day downtown Phoenix, the Thana Otham Nation. In the words of Lisa Sharon Harper, they were and are here. We see you, we honor you, and we thank you for laying foundations of harmony, balance, truth, and honor. Thank you for stewarding the land where Creator settled your people. We bless you, we bless your elders, past, present, and emerging. How long, O Lord? How long, O Lord, will black lives be collateral damage on behalf of a power structure called white supremacy? Where are you, God? Where were you when Tyree called out for his mama? Where were you when Breonna Taylor was shot in her home? Where were you when George Floyd suffocated under the knee of a white man who wanted to kill him? Where were you, great creator? And where are you now? These are questions that came up for me simply reflecting on the death death of Tyree Nichols. I don't know about you, but I don't have space for church as usual. Church as usual, in my opinion, gets people killed. A church that is not addressing white supremacy perpetuates white supremacy. Church leaders and pastors and orators who don't use their platform to show us a new way, in my opinion, are wasting our time. I joined Kendall on his team of youth leaders at Neighborhood for a retreat last weekend. And he went around and asked everyone this question. What is the most important thing to you right now? What is the most important thing to you right now? And for me, I said, it is imperative that I be in spaces where I am seen, understood, affirmed, and celebrated. All four of them. All four of those things are imperative for me because I cannot be in spaces or in a community that is not like that. Because I've been in spaces where I'm celebrated, but I'm not understood. I've been in spaces where I'm not affirmed. I've been in spaces where they see me, but they don't do the work to truly understand me and my blackness and what it means to be a woman and what it means for me to walk out into the world each and every day. The world is on fire. And if you're telling me that Jesus doesn't care about my world being on fire, then I don't want to follow that Jesus. So for me, that is community, which is the word of the chapter of the stories that we will tell tonight. Community for me is a safe space for me to be a part of a place where I am seen, 
or am sought to be understood, or I'm affirmed in my womanhood and celebrated in my blackness. In light of the tragic trauma in our world, I want to take the next five minutes and give us space to just be with one another. We're gonna play some music and you can do what feels comfortable. You can simply sit, you can pray, you can write, you can stand, you can kneel, you can cry, you can ask God hard questions. But I want you to reflect on what does it mean for you? What do you need to feel safe in a community? But more than anything, I would encourage you to to what you feel in your body because God has blessed us with a body that will speak to us. And often when we don't have words, our body feels things to replace those words. So let's take the next five minutes and just be together. And we'll be back. Let's take a deep breath together and let it out. Yes. Often my therapist will reset with a deep breath. And so I do that with us together tonight. Well, once again, um, and just let me say this to end even that segment a little bit is it's okay to just sit with the uncomfortable and to just sit with pain and to sit with grief and to just be. Um, And I hope that you allow space in your life for that. Um, In a fast-paced world, it's not healthy to just keep going to the next thing to the next thing when so many traumatic things are happening to us. So I pray that you learn how to let yourself life breathe a bit. Well, once again, Kaleo Stories is oftentimes meant to platform stories of people of color so that we might center their lived experiences and learn to be a beloved community together. But today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. We wanna hear stories from a few non-people of color, our white fellow friends. (laughs) Because to be honest, I was thinking about this, it's hard to be white and stick around here if you're not into this type of work of justice and Jesus caring for the margins. Um, because you can't just kind of come um, around and not actually be about it. That's just not the type of community that we are. Um, and you can't just come consistently and not choose to learn how to decenter yourself. And so our chapter tonight is about community. It also must have non-people of color that are with us together which is reflected in our leadership even, and that I share pastoring with a white man, Chris Townley. You know, we do this together. So the white people that we'll share tonight and that are gonna be speaking, I wanna publicly say I see them as my brothers and my sisters. I feel personally seen, understood, affirmed, and celebrated by them. And I hope that you with me can reflect on the beauty of what that means in a world that is like ours. Community is beautiful. And may the stories that you'll hear tonight give you hope that there is another way of being in the world. With that being said, please welcome our first story of the evening called Community in the Courtyard by Josh and Hannah Coldagelli and their (laughs) baby-to-be. Welcome them. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, as Aaron said, we're two. Uh, we are Josh and Hannah Coldagelli. We've been with Kaleo for just a little over two years, two years and like 
a couple weeks, uh, really. Um, so we were going to talk about kind of our experience of what brought us to Kaleo, and then our experience over the past two years uh, as well. So I thought it'd be best to start with where we were when we first moved to Arizona. So we're both uh, classic Midwest transplants from uh, the upper Midwest. I'm from Wisconsin originally, Hannah's originally from Michigan, where church culture is very different in the Midwest than it would be out here in Phoenix and even though we're not coastal, the West Coast. Uh, just a very different uh, culture and experience. I grew up in the church uh, and I grew up with a mom who worked in the church who wasn't allowed to teach in the church, who wasn't allowed to have a voice in the church, even though she worked there for a very long time, uh, who has called me once a week the past three weeks because the church she works in once again reiterated that she cannot have a voice in that church. Um, so kind of bringing some of that with us uh, in, our, in our packed and loaded cars to the desert. And when we came out here, we wanted to find a church where we felt safe and seen, and where we settled when we first moved here in the summer of 2019 uh, was not that. Uh, it seemed like that at first, uh, but later as we moved on, as the COVID-19 pandemic started and revved up, we realized that the place we were was not a place for us. Uh, it was not a place that uh, respected our safety, that respected um, some of our pasts as well. Um, circling back a little bit to right before we moved here, Hannah and I met in a small college town in Michigan where we both individually had some abusive church experiences at two separate churches, uh, which for as small of a town it was and how many churches it had, not a very good percentage of, uh, <laughs> of healthy churches there. Um, but that's what you get with a lot of small college towns. So bringing that baggage with us, wanting to find a place that we could be challenged but not shamed, uh, be seen but not taken advantage of, and uh, we finally found that with Kaleo in January of 2021. So we were sitting down at coffee in December of 2020 uh, when we thought COVID was over, and it wasn't. Um, and we kind of were just sitting down and we looked at each other and we we're like, we need to find a new church, don't we? <laughs> and uh, we, we couldn't have been happier with, with where we where we ended up. So it was a Saturday afternoon in, in January and we kind of typed into Google like churches in Phoenix <laughs> and Kaleo was at the top. And so we, re and we saw, you know, that uh, we were meeting outside. There were masked meetings. There were uh, things that were kind of validating some of our concerns with re-entering in-person church after the disruption that uh, COVID-19 started and continued to cause uh, during during that time between March 2020 and even now to this day. Um, so we we came and we walked in and we were we were instantly greeted by Chris and Chase at the time and Aaron was just about to be ordained. I think Aaron's ordination was our second Sunday, second or third Sunday at Kaleo, and that was something that was really reassuring to us. It was seeing not only a woman, but a woman of color being validated and honestly anointed to, to be a leader was something that we uh, were proud of and wanting to be a part of. Seeing uh, a community that was small and intentionally placed in downtown Phoenix for reasons to actually help downtown Phoenix and not just kind of be another colonizer, <laughs> really. Um, and to find a place like that, it was something that we thought honestly wasn't possible. Or at least, I don't want to speak for Hannah. I thought wasn't possible. Um, through 2020, through the culture wars of 2020 that continue, through the political culture that continues, I still believed in a Jesus that cared about justice and love and compassion for your neighbor, but I, I was starting to not believe that a church that cared about justice and love for your neighbor and compassion truly existed. So after uh, being able to finally move back inside at Kaleo, 
starting to have meals again, continuously reassuring that we made the right choice. And now um, Hannah's going to kind of talk more about our time here over those past two years. Thanks, Josh. So um, Josh kind of gave you guys a little background of like how we found Kaleo, but um, one of the big reasons we also left our previous church and like also um, the desire to find a church like Kaleo, where I agree, like we didn't think a church like Kaleo existed. Um, I am a middle school teacher, so I have taught here for four years. And I was talking with Joshua and I'm like, how come my community that I teach, like the people I work with, the students I work with Monday through Friday, doesn't look like the community I'm surrounding myself with on Sunday. And that got us really thinking, like we were in a very white church and we were like, this isn't the community we want to be in. This is also not the community we feel like is gonna be something we wanna raise our kids in. And so we were looking for that multi-ethnic church. We were looking for a community that represented um, what we believe in as, as a couple, but also what we believe in what heaven's going to look like, what Jesus wants um, like us to be surrounding ourselves with. Does this place exist? We, we really just like sat down and we were thinking, like, does this place exist? We came to Kaleo and immediately we were like, okay, like we're looking around, we're like, this is... The first thing, I think it was um, the first Sunday we came here, um, it was Chris preaching, and he, that was like your always opening statement is like, this is the multi-ethnic community of Jesus. And I'm like, this is exactly, like I just remember us looking at each other like, this is what we were looking for. Um, and we stuck around because not only were Aaron and Chris, and then at the time Chase was also a pastor, like every Sunday we were walking away and we could actually feel like we were learning something, we were a part of a community, we were um, not embarrassed, like that was a huge thing. I'm like, I would be embarrassed if my students saw me at a church where it, just, it was just perpetuating white supremacy, what Aaron mentioned earlier, like if you are not actively fighting against white supremacy in your church, then you are perpetuating it. And we knew that we wanted to be a part of fighting against white supremacy. Um, and like Aaron mentioned, uh, we have a baby due in June, and we're really thinking about, like, how are we going to be raising our kid to actively be anti-racist, and how are we actively fighting against white supremacy? And we can truly say that Kaleo is a community that is doing that um, through our book clubs, through um, just the educational, um, and one of the biggest things that we always talk about is, like, we want to make sure that everyone here is feels understood and everyone here feels like they do have a voice, specifically our people of color. And so while we are white people and we we are usually not a part of like these stories, we love that because we love hearing from our community members of color and we wanna be a part of that continually. And it's rare to find spaces like that, unfortunately. And so I'm really glad to be a part of, we're glad to be a part of a space that is actively working towards that. and. I hope that one day there's more spaces like this. That's the goal, right? Uh, is that there's more and more spaces like this. And now I can actually talk to my students about like, yeah, like when they ask like, where do you go to church and stuff? Like, what do you, like where do you go? I'm like, I can be proud of the community that I'm a part of. I can be proud of what I am learning to help my students. So I'm not just a white woman who's teaching students of color and I'm not actively helping them. I'm not actively giving them like, um, praising their voices and not actively lifting them up. Uh, I don't want to be that white teacher doing that. I want to be a white teacher who gives them the platform to use their voices. I want to make sure that I'm not contributing to um, systemic racism in our education system, which is another conversation for another time. I, I know we don't have much time here, but um, we're just really, really grateful to be a part of a community that we're we're, we're proud to be a part of, and we're proud of a community here at Kaleo that is doing really good things in the city and uh, beyond. Um, and we're just really grateful that Chris and Aaron have given us this space to show up as we are and show up um, to help each other. And yeah, do you want to add anything? Uh, not that I can think of. I mean, um, like I mentioned, kind of coming with some some spiritual baggage. I think that's also just one of the the most relieving things coming here on Sunday evenings and um, 
is not not leaving with that bag feeling heavier <laughs> than when we walked in the doors, uh, but usually feeling lighter, I think is really important. Uh, and only other thing I'll I'll add, um, kind of talking about my mom earlier, uh, working in a in a church back in Milwaukee, um, something that she has to get asked all the time. Um, I'm one of four boys, and we're all all still active in the church, which I think is kind of rare, and my mom kind of gets asked, she's like, well, how, like, how do you, like, your young people, your young adults, like, why are they still active in the church? And I think that finding a church like Kaleo is the only reason I am. <laughs> um, finding a church that that cares about people, that um, that loves people, that shares a meal, that's flexible, that you're not going to get hit with the Oh, we didn't see you the past two weeks. Uh, where you been? You don't get hit with the uh, the old uh, Christian guilt uh, or anything like that. And I think continuously knowing that Kaleo, as a little C church, is fighting to fix some of the wrongs of the big C church, uh, especially towards communities of color and especially towards... Um, people who have been damaged by the church is something that's really important to me and makes me really proud to be a part of this place. Um, and yeah, so that's just a little, that's the, uh, the spark notes version <laughs> of why we love coming here. But, uh, again, thank you, Aaron and Chris for letting us share tonight. And, um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, just find us after. Um, I hope that you, when you hear these stories, um, I love that you guys are having a baby, and that, that's just really cool. But I hope that when you hear these stories that you are also seeing yourself in what they're saying, because uh, the community is not Chris and I, although, like, thank you for your kind words, but also, like, the community is you. The community is each and every one of you and the pews that sit around a table and share a meal that listen to the lived experiences of the people that are sitting to your left, to your right, in front and behind. Um, so as these stories continue, see yourself and what these people are sharing. So with that being said, the next story is called In This Place by Emma Sonart. Please welcome Emma. I don't know why it makes me feel so much better to have my laptop, but hi, everybody. Um, good evening, uh, Kaleo family. Um, I'm so excited to get to share with you today, and I do want to acknowledge that um, I know the space, as Aaron mentioned, is supposed to be for people of color, and that I do disrupt that space, um, but I really am very honored to be here and to get to share with you. It just feels like home and family to be here, um, but my name's Emma <laughs> Sonart. Um, it's just been a wonderful joy and blessing uh, to be a part of this family for two and a half years, and um, I just have a deep love for this space and the community that we call Kaleo. Uh, this has been a really transformative space for me, um, and I really feel like I can be myself here. Um, I can be my very intense, uh, very intentional, independent, inquisitive self in this space. Um, I can ask questions, wrestle with God, interpret scripture in several ways, try new ways of worshiping, embrace the part of myself that loves mystery, uh, but also the part of myself that longs to make sense of it all. I can be in a formative season where I'm learning, unlearning, deconstructing, reconstructing, and that mysterious process where the more I know, the less I know. <laughs> um, and it's, it's an incredible thing, too, to be embraced as a single person in this space. I don't get that often um, in some of the other church spaces that I've been a part of, and I also love that I can work through and reclaim uh, some of the beautiful things in my journey um, through the many kinds of church spaces that I've been a part of while also unlearning some of that white supremacy and destructive things. Uh, my view of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit becomes wider in this space. I've started to see listening as something much more than attentiveness there's something powerful about women of color preaching here. Um, this community really listens. There is a compassionate action 
in the ways that we move beyond just attentiveness. And it starts to impact the way that we live, the way that we read, the way that we love, and the way that we show up. I can be imaginative and hopeful in this space. I love to dream about what the world could be like while also holding space for how the world is now and the doubts in the morning that comes in the midst of the waiting and the hoping. I can also be impatient for justice in this space. Um, Patience is something I've struggled with throughout my story, and I'm free to struggle more with that here. Uh, I can share my passions in this space. I'm a big verbal processor. Uh, I can be really loud, and I love engaging in discussions and debates. Um, I love talking about social justice and issues that I believe in. I love mysticism. I love Jesus and the stories about him. I love the Holy Sp- how the Holy Spirit moves. I love to see God at work, at, in the, even in the messes and the struggles. I love working with college students and high school students. Um, I love living with several women in my house um, from several different life stages. I love telling stories about the Phoenix area and my job. I love getting to learn people's names and stories. I love long talks, deep conversations, supporting local businesses and thrift shopping, my dog, Zeal. Um, I love serving and loving people by showing up for them. I love sitting with people through hard things. I love growing in fellowship with new and old friends. I love music and movies, board games. I love traveling and exploring. I love the Bible. I love wrestling with it. I love teaching and discipling. I got to preach my first sermon here. Uh, I love getting to be myself and without having to put any walls or fronts. And I love being able to wear my heart on my sleeve and I can be all of those things in this space. And there's this song that came to mind as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to say. Um, And it's one of those songs that really strikes a chord for me. Um, Music has that effect on me where there's just certain songs that like speak into my soul. Um, And there's one that's called um, My First Name by Common Hymnal. And I just wanted to share um, the four lines of the chorus. They go like this. Um, I want to go where everyone knows my first name where I am welcomed in with a smile and embrace. I want to rest my feet at the table my father has laid. I want to feel home again. And I've always heard this song um, and kind of just have been thinking about the kingdom of God, but I so often feel this way when I come to Kaleo. Uh, And I truly believe that the kingdom of God is breaking through in this place so much that I get glimpses of it every time I'm here with you. Um, And I'm getting like all soft, but I'm just like, oh, I just have so much love for this space. Um, And I just get glimpses of the way things were meant to be from the beginning and how they will be again someday. Um, And from joining Kaleo in the 2020 Zoom church days um, to now I call this place and this people my home. And I also wrote a poem um, that's uh, actually where I got the title in this place that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, Because as I was thinking about our community, uh, these were the words that I found that really capture um, our gatherings, our meals, our book clubs, and our one-on-one conversations um, that I um, have grown to treasure throughout my last couple years here. There is mystery in this place. A reverence for what we don't know, open for discovery, and they reveal and conceal. There is questioning in this place for how much longer do we watch? How many lives are there to take? Must we wait? There is rage in this place. This darkness space lurks within the light too. God is angry, aren't you? There is crying in this place. The God of the bathroom floor who sits in the midst of reeling and violent fits. There is resilience in this place with everything we've lost. There is silence in this place, yet we continue on. There is silence in this place, a place of voices going quiet. 
so we focus on the one voice. There's strength in this place on the shoulders of our people that our ancestors passed on to follow the narrow path. There's boldness in this place, the confidence to speak subversively as it may be to break down barriers. There's rest in this place to know when to say enough from working, from assimilating, from hiding. There is beauty in this place with the wooden pews, the stained glass glistened and people listen. There is healing in this place. The wound scabs over the slow work of spirit so we don't rush over this part. There is forgiveness in this place, a house of tension, hard conversations, but there is a genuine response. There is love in this place where we cling to the heart of Rabbi Jesus being, existing, and rest in our belovedness. There is community in this place. We come to the table, breaking bread and sharing stories till dark. There is grace in this place. Like the misfits and the outcasts, we are accepted, even with our deepest misses. There is inclusion in this place, redefined as it once was. For who is my neighbor, from who is my neighbor, to what neighbor am I? There is belonging in this place. For the lost, the questioning, the forgotten, the tossed aside and sent to die, and everyone on the outside. There's challenge in this place, an invitation to go with us. Not all have come, but here we are. There's hope in this place, a vulnerable imagination for a world where things are as they should be. There is creativity in this place, the God-ordained gifts that each of us hold for communal celebration. There's joy in this place, to hear each other laugh again, cherishing the moments where we are whole. There's unity in this place, a togetherness, a dance of three in one, even when it seems impossible. There's Jesus in this place, his turning cheek resistance, his flipping tables of injustice, his washing feet acts of love. There is Holy Spirit in this place, their mystery unfolding, their soft whispering, their encouraging confrontation. There is God in this place, liberating the slaves, partnering with humanity, restoring relationships. There is kingdom in this place, the turning of hearts, a table set to be well with one another, to be known. Taking that advice from Aaron's therapist to breathe to reset. All that to say, thank you for being a part of this community with me. Um, thank you for embracing me and helping me to embrace myself. Uh, it's once again that I share my deep love and gratitude for each one of you. And I'm just so honored to be able to share this space with you. And I can't wait to hear the other stories for tonight. So thank you. Oh, man, I feel like I should have snapped. Like, what the heck? You're a great writer, Emma. Come on. Goodness gracious. Um, beautiful. Beautiful. Would love a copy of that poem. <laughs> Maybe we'll post it or something. I don't know. Thank you, Emma, once again for sharing that story. Um, and now we have the wonderful opportunity to shift to some stories of, uh, from women of color. And our first is Yvette sharing a story called Free to Be. Welcome, Yvette. You, you want to stand? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like already short enough. So, you know, this looks like I'm sitting, right? Anyway. Um, all right, I haven't done this in a minute, so I'm a little nervous. Um, also, I did not do spoken word like this lady right here, she and hers. 
Um, and I've been coming to Kaleo since about like November 2021. It feels like I've been here for like five years, but it hasn't even existed that long, I don't think. Um, so it's a, a little bit over a year. Um, and I am a first generation uh, Guatemalan, and I'm originally from Los Angeles. Shout out to my Dodger fans. Anyone? Okay. That's what I thought, but um, can I make this go up more? Yeah. Um, yeah, so as I reflected on uh, my time here at Kaleo and being part of the community, um, kind of four ideas or concepts of like faith have come to mind that I feel like I've been leaning into like evolving and changing and rewriting these ideas in my head um, and in my heart. And the four things are come as you are, um, God with us, uh, community and like being with each other. And then the fourth thing is justice, like as a pillar of faith and action. Um, so Kaleo has been a space where these past lived experience of like Christianity and community. Um, when I think about my faith journey as a whole, um, I feel like I can kind of divide it into like two different parts. Um, and I kind of like to think of them as like two different periods of conditioning um, in a lot of different ways. Um, the first is like my early childhood to like mid-teens. Um, I attended a uh, Spanish-speaking, like very like Pentecostal, like traditional strict church um, that was pretty much 100% like Latino immigrant communities. Um, and the messages that I got from those spaces were very fear-based, um, a lot of binary thinking, very black and white, um, and pressure to perform and to check the boxes of being a Christian. Um, from there, kind of when I started to branch off and try to figure out my faith in a different way on my own, apart from my family and my um, like cultural background, uh, I stepped into a very white ministry and white church, um, very conservative. And the messages that I got there was to code switch <laughs> and look and sound like the people around me, um, to not really rock the boat. Um, and uh, at least for me, I worked with communities of kids um, that looked and sounded like me and that had similar backgrounds. And so there is also that expectation to bring the brown kids and make the white spaces more diverse and stuff. And not so blatant, but, you know, <laughs> in reflection, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, so this first idea of come as you are, um, I feel like I've come to this space to Cleo um, wounded, like triggered, pretty skeptical of Christianity um, in general based off of these two earlier versions of my experiences um, in the faith. And um, they kind of sounded more like this, like come as you are if um, you're submissive to the all-male leadership, um, if you tone down your strong opinions or like your Latina culture, um, or if you only show passionate emotion, like in adoration of God. Um, but I feel like here the contrast has been that um, I can come as I am, even when I'm not sure, like, what being Christian means anymore for me, like, in my life, um, when I'm pretty burnt out on religion, which is pretty much how I've shown up and kind of continue to show up week after week, um, and where it's even hard to read the Bible because it just kind of makes me angry sometimes. Um, kind of that second point there is God with us. Um, Pat, the past year has been one of the hardest, I feel like, in my life. I've had a lot of, like, mental health challenges. And um, I'm out here in Arizona because I'm in grad school for occupational therapy. And I feel like being in grad school just sucked last year, which is really hard. Um, and I feel like throughout that, uh, throughout this season, um, I've wrestled with that idea of, like, God with me, God with us. I feel like for the most part, what was written in my head about God being with me was more of a problem solver, like God was a problem solver, God was a fixer, but I feel like week after week here, I've continued to hear that like, no, nope, like he's with me in the pain, like he's with me in the dark, he's with me in the, in the pit, as I like to say, um, and so that has been, I think, very transformational for me to know that I have that type of a God. Um, 
And in that same way, the idea of community and like being with each other um, in these spaces, struggling, um, and never you know. I met with Chris and Aaron a few times and let them know that you know I was just really struggling. Um, and never once did I like sense this urgency from them that they w wanted to change, you know, where I was at or fix where I was at. Um, but they were just really good, and not just them, but friends here in this space. Like, we're good about holding space <laughs> for me for where I was at. Um, and standing in solidarity with me in my pain and my suffering. Um, and in other words, you know, like, yeah, like I just, it was just something different um, for me. And again, being okay in that space, being okay with the discomfort and the waiting. Um, and then finally, this idea of justice for me, um, to talk about and to lean into the truths of oppression, white supremacy, systemic racism, as a mean to like drive us to action as Christians. Um, I remember one of the first times that I heard Aaron speak about white supremacy, I cringed hardcore. As a person of color, I cringed hardcore. Um, and in my head, I was just like, oh my gosh, like what, what are the white people in this room thinking? Like, are they gonna get up and leave? Like, um, <laughs> you know, uh, and kind of telling him like, yo, like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, you know, um, you know, and he just reminded me that like that that's what we were about, like saying the truth regardless of how uncomfortable it is. And I think it wasn't until a little bit later that I realized that I had been conditioned to like protect white people at all times, like from hearing the truth um, and, you know, even protect uh, from letting people know that I, you know, didn't feel like I belonged in a lot of spaces, especially in ministry and churches um, that I've been a part of in the past that there was always a part of me that feel, felt a little bit less than, um, that I always felt the pressure to fit in and to perform. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of how, like, just this idea of justice, I feel like, changed to me of, like, no, like, we have to lean into the truth in order to, like, be led to action and do something about it. Um, and so... To end, um, I'm really happy to be a part of this community um, where, as the title of my story says, uh, free to be, because um, I can come as I am, um, know God is with me, and the folks around me here are with me wherever it is that I'm at, um, and where we can really, like, participate in, like, Christ-centered justice. Thank you. Super proud of Yvette, because it takes a lot of courage to come up and share personal stories like that. So thank you once again, Yvette, for sharing. Um, I, too, stand in solidarity once again with Yvette, because the first time I ever came up here and talked about white supremacy, I, too, cringed and wasn't sure what the white people were going to do. <laughs> but there was Chris, like, no, you do have, you go ahead and do the, say the thing, say the thing. And so I said the thing, and I'm still saying the thing, and the white people are still here, so okay. <laughs> you know? Um, but anyways... Uh, last but not least, uh, two people that I think honestly carry so much heart uh, and have led us in worship in such a beautiful way and embody, um, I just love y'all. I don't know if I could say everything, but Tina and Jay are going to share a story and then they're going to lead us into worship, but they are just phenomenal people and so they're going to come and share a story called Accepted. Please welcome Jay and Tina. We are the mommy-daughter duo, and our son here, Isaiah, well, my son, <laughs> my son, but no, uh, thank you so much for allowing us the space to share and to be heard. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start, because she was a little nervous, so I'll go ahead and go first. Um, my best friend and I, we love taking personality tests, so one day she texted me and was like, take this one. And it was like four total personality tests. And of course, I got, I scored positive for Rebel. And I've always felt like a misfit, an outspoken one. Um, and uh, in this room, I'm so glad to be comforted and heard by Rebels and misfits. That's what I'm so thankful for here at um, Kaleo. And really quick, the way I first found out and discovered the magic that is Pastor Aaron, 
I was uh, on the worship team for this conference. It's called Waging Peace. It's a women's conference. Every, every, it happens, every, you know, going through, watching the conference on the TV. And I see Pastor Erin and her sister, these gorgeous women on the screen, talking their talk, like talking their mess and, and like unadulterated, unfiltered. And I was like, who are these women? I remember telling, I was like looking to the side, like to the worship team, like, who are these women? Like, this was so, it captivated me. There's a lot going on in the room. Like people are eating, they're checking their makeup. And I'm like glued to the screen. Who are these women? Even the, my, my, my boss at the time, I invited her and she's from Atlanta. She's got, she's got this big personality. She's a multimillionaire. And she's like, I love her. I loved them. And I'm like, I know. Who are these women? So Donnie, who worship leads here, he invited us to the Kaleo offices. I walk in, you know, unseemingly, and there is Pastor Aaron in the corner. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it's her, it's her. And she didn't know it, but I walk in there and I'm like, I want to say hi, but this is going to be so weird and so awkward. <laughs> and so at the end of it, I like mustered up the strength to be like, hi, I saw you in the conference. You were so amazing. I think I said something like that. And, uh, and then, of course, I asked for it. I asked myself, you know, why? Like, this is the only church service and sermon that makes me cry. And it's because of this woman and all of the powerful things she says. And, and my experience with Pastor Chris, too. I'm not trying to, you know, hey, there, I, I see you. <laughs> but, but really, when I think of what and who Kaleo is in the Christian community and in our neighborhood, I feel like they are very rebellious in the best way, a beautiful misfit. I see two trailblazing warriors dedicated to the inglorious, sometimes disenchanting, unglamorous long game, looking through the lens of and fighting for the left out the unseen, the unheard, the forgotten, the other. And when our Kaleo pastors guide us to practice the ways of Jesus, they do their best to not discriminate, discriminate against all of what Jesus stands for. And in that way, they also do their best to not discriminate against me and all that Jesus stands for in me. And in my children and in my culture and in the future that Jesus has for me and, and my family. Many of us came from or are still in spaces at church that do not acknowledge equality, uh, where am I? equality in the pulpit, diversity in the pews, or the inequity in our neighborhoods, communities, and schools. In a vital space like this, I am gently invited to explore and identify the ways in which I've been taught and conditioned, like Yvette said, to make, to take up less space and to dampen my shine. And then I'm invited to replace them with the thoughts that Jesus has for an outspoken, valuable, spirit-led, gifted woman of color. In other church settings, I've had to be the bridge builder and I'm going to go, I'm going to go here because I know Kaleo pastors love to do this. Okay. So watch. Um, I've had to be the bridge builder that Latasha Morrison speaks about in her book, Be the Bridge. <laughs> I got another one. Hold on. Have, helping to navigate folks through books like White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. But no one feel left out at the end of a module where I'm begging people to see me and to see my people. Talking about seeing the other for the entire hour and a half we're there. But when I come here and when others like me come here, we can take a breath and just be. We feel safe. I know I am seen. I don't have to fight for it here. I know I am heard. I don't have to raise my voice for it here because believe me, I do that too. And I know I am loved. I don't have to lie and pretend for it here. I am accepted. Pastor Aaron and Pastor Chris seamlessly, simultaneously, and intentionally make this a space that helps us all to thrive and to grow in the ways of Jesus. 
Um, I'm not going to top that, but I'm going to go now. Um, <laughs> I am grateful for Kaleo and how it has changed my life for many reasons. Um, for example, Pastor Aaron has been a visual representation that my voice is valid and has in general been a big influence um, for me as I navigate this period of my life. To see someone that looks like her, that looks like me, who can teach, who can be influential, who can be important and take up space. I went to my first protest when I was a toddler holding up a sign um, protesting, sorry, I'm blind. Um, <laughs> um, protesting and validating the lives of immigrants in our states against SB 1070. Since then, social justice has been very and intimately important to me. And in all the years that I've gone to church, I've never seen or belonged to a justice-centric church. And I've learned that these things are just as important as believing in Jesus. And to see the two, the two come together has made, a lot, has made me a lot more well-rounded in my faith. I take from Pastor Aaron and Pastor Chris's messages and apply them to my everyday faith and life. Um, seeing my core values affirmed in the Christian faith is motivating as a teenager to keep um, the faith as I grow. Um, I'm beyond grateful for the opportunity I've been given to sing here with my mom. Um, compared to other spaces I've sung in, I feel more comfortable singing here. I feel like this is a safe place for me to practice and grow in my God-given gifts in a way that is gone honoring. I'm so grateful for the community here at Kaleo. I feel like I can be authentic. I feel like I am in alignment with like-minded people. I feel seen and I feel important. I feel like it's okay to take up space here and in turn take up space any and everywhere else. Amen. That was not necessary. And one more round of applause for Tina and Jay as they lead us. Um, another deep breath, reset. And let's pray together before they um, lead us in song. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you so much for just the beauty that is in this community of each and every person that sits in these pews that comes um, whenever that they may be able to come. God, we are grateful to exist as something new and something different. And all the stories that we heard tonight, there are many that, of us that have experienced hurtful, harmful things that are trying to hold on to faith when we've been taught to leave or merge our real life experiences with the life of Jesus and the ways that we follow him. Lord God, would you remind us that we are a beautiful community together and that beauty can only be seen together. Would you help us to continue to practice the ways of Jesus? Would you give us courage to continue to leave this place being true to who we are? Would you give us courage to keep taking up space, to keep being bold, to keep saying the thing of truth, to be truth tellers that start the process of healing and liberation in the communities that we go in and out of every day? We are grateful for community because together we are formed, we are challenged, we are seen, we are celebrated Together we reflect the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen.
hearts who are content and all who feel unworthy all who hurt with nothing left will know that you are holy and all When I thought I lost me, you knew where I left me. You reintroduced me to your love. You picked up all my pieces, put me back together. You are the defender of my thought I lost me, you knew where I left me, you reintroduced me to your love, you picked up all my pieces, put me back together, you are the defender. 
when I thought I lost me, you knew where I left me, you reintroduced me to your love, picked up all my pieces, put me back together, you are the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you again that you are, as it's been shared and reminded tonight, that you are a God who's with us. That we are loved, that we need each other. We are together. We think that you meet us in the midst of prayers and in the midst of silence and in the midst of outrage and in the midst of 
suffering. That you meet us in the midst of sharing our most personal stories of singing songs at the top of our lungs, celebrating and remembering who you are and what you've done and what you long to do. Thanks for meeting us in this place this evening. God, thank you for the gift of hearing the stories of people in our community. Would you continue to grow us deep in your roots of love? Would you help us become the beloved in the way of your son, Jesus? We love you. It's your name we pray. Amen. If this message encouraged you, let us know or share it with someone you know. For more information about Kaleo, visit kaleophx.com or follow us on social media at kaleophx.